aware that this presentation will be recorded and possibly shared online. You may turn off your camera if you do not wish to appear in the video. Also be aware that your name as shown in the participant screen could appear in the video. So please rename yourself now if you wish. If you have questions during the presentation, please enter them in the meeting chat area so the presenter can answer them later. <clears throat> um, thank you for joining us today at JOUT International 2021. Please welcome um, Paul, uh, who will be presenting on reflections and ideas on teaching English oral presentation courses. So Professor um, Paul, you may begin. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for uh, coming to my short talk today. Um, so you already know the, uh, the, the topic of my talk. Um, but today um, I'm mostly going to focus on um, reflecting on how I changed um, the way I integrated student presentation and feedback into my oral presentation course. Um, so first, let me give you some quick um, context to my courses, and then I'll talk about um, what I actually did. Um, so first, uh, this is a, um, my course is a research presentation course. It's elective and it's for um, postgraduate Japanese university students um, who are all uh, researching some field of science and technology. Um, now, uh, the, the aims of this course are to build um, proficiency and confidence in research presentation. Um, but uh, in reality, um, there are a wide range of students who take my course. Some of them are third year PhD course uh, students um, with a lot of research behind them and presentation experience. And other students are, are first year uh, master students who don't actually have any research data. Um, so a lot of the things I will talk about today can be um, mostly applicable to more general oral presentation courses. Uh, that's a photo of me uh, on the uh, bottom right there. Uh, this is when I started the courses around seven years ago. <laughs> As you can see, I, I still had no hair. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, when I first um, created the course about seven years ago, uh, this is the course schedule here on the left. Um, it's an eight week course, a 90 minute lessons. And uh, the first six weeks are mostly dedicated to building more general uh, oral presentation skills in our effective content, visuals or delivery. Um, and then um, leading up to a final uh, five to seven minute uh, presentation in week seven. I think this is kind of a, a traditional approach to a presentation course. Um, the final presentation is 50% of their grade, or sorry, was 50% of their grade. And the other 50% was based on a submission of a course booklet, um, which covered material uh, activities and homework over the first uh, six weeks. And then finally, I would give them some um, written feedback and scores in the final week there. Um, this picture here is one of my students in one of the first courses doing their final uh, five minute uh, presentation here in week seven. Um, so the course um, sort of uh, revolved around um, the, the three main uh, points of presentation. Sorry, this, this uh, criteria here is a little bit small, but um, we have, uh, we're, we're, when I evaluate their final presentations, I'm looking at content organization one here, two delivery and three visuals. You can see they're all sort of divided into many sort of subcategories there. And I base my uh, evaluation on this and um, this is an example of the feedback that a student would have gotten um, at the beginning. Oh, sorry, when I first started doing the courses. Um, as you can see here, um, just let me get my highlighter out here. Where's it gone? It's disappeared. Okay, it, it doesn't matter. Um, on the right here, you can see my the weak and strong points. Um, I've taken the sort of the codes for the from the criteria there. And written them there and then giving them some extra comments um, and their feedback. Um, now like all courses um, uh, there was plenty of room for, for improvement when I first started um, and I wanted to um, I had some sort of issues. Um, firstly 
uh, there was limited pre presenting time for the students with just that final presentation, that short final presentation. Um, secondly, um, there was limited follow up on their presentation. These students had put a lot of work into preparing their presentations over, you know, about three weeks. And then um, all they're getting at the end is um, some kind of uh, written feedback and score from myself. And there's sort of, there's no opportunity for them to action that feedback. Uh, another point is um, a problem was presentation pressure. As I said, it was the final presentation was 50% of their grade and they were suddenly having to stand up at the end with all this grade pressure, plus the pressure of being evaluated and delivery visuals and content. So there was a lot of pressure there for the students at the end. And the final challenge was, um, I found it difficult to find authentic um, examples or video examples of people actually presenting. Of course, I, I could find um, videos of people presenting from EFL textbooks and online, uh, but th they were very sort of almost rehearsed, especially the EFL materials. They look sort of not very authentic, rehearsed, and they weren't really relevant to my students' context, which was research presentation. So these were the challenges I had early on, and these challenges are sort of also reflected in the post-course student feedback I got for my first few courses. Um, the students wanted to present more. They wanted more personalized feedback um, in a nutshell. So what did I do? Um, I made some, I started making some adjustments to the course over the years. Um, and then I ended up, well, this is the course I'm teaching right now um, with this sort of final schedule. Um, the main difference here with my new adjust, adjusted course schedule is they doing they're now doing two presentations um, as opposed to one. Um, now the reasons for that um, obviously it gives them more presentation practice and um, more feedback. Um, but I think more importantly it allows them to apply the feedback they got from presentation one uh, into presentation two um, and actually sort of action on the feedback they were getting. Um, and also doing a, a sort of short presentation at the beginning of the course that's only evaluated on delivery. So I'm only evaluating presentation one on delivery, sort of I feel eases them in to presenting uh, live in front of the class, as opposed to suddenly having to do one final presentation at the end. Um, I think this sort of reduced the pressure on the final one. Um, but as you can see, the final one is 60% of their grade. So it's still quite a lot, um, but um, I also decided to introduce a self-evaluation and peer evaluation component to their presentation scores. So my feedback and score was only half of that, that actual score. The other um, two quarters were based on their own um, self-evaluation and an evaluation from um, their peers. Um, I also decided to cite, um, introduce many reflection discussions um, after each presentation day um, or just at the end of each presentation day where the, the students just sat down in small groups of maybe three or four and just reflected on how they their presentation went uh, sort of informally before they got their, their uh, official feedback and just sort of say what they thought went well on their presentation and what they thought uh, they could improve on for next time. Um, and then along came COVID-19. So our classes were forced uh, online last uh, spring. Um, and I, um, this is part of actually another completely different presentation about how I approached that. Uh, but the, the one positive outcome is um, now we are back to doing these classes uh, directly face-to-face. -face. Um, but the university I work at um, has decided to uh, record all lectures from now on. Um, and include them in the lecture archive, uh, which is great for our course because it, it also means the students can have access to the videos of themselves presenting. Um, that means that they can improve their self evaluations. Um, and also it helps me uh, give more detailed uh, feedback to the students. Uh, this is a photo here on, on the right of us uh, going back from online to live uh, face to face classes um, in autumn uh, last year. That's actually what you see on the lecture archive here. Um, as far as the self evaluations go, so now um, on each of the presentations, the students were given 
this form on the uh, left where they had to write uh, strong points and weak points for each presenter. And then I would fill out the rest of the form on the right there. So um, let me give you an example of um, this form, uh, a, a form that one of my students um, completed relatively recently. Um, now this form was for the final uh, five minute pr present presentation. Um, as you can see, the student has um, given, I wish I could find my, uh, my pen here, but the icons disappeared for some reason. Anyways, okay, so uh, as you can see here, the number they are on the, on the left, this student has peer evaluated all, all the other students and also given themselves a, an evaluation score. Uh, they were presenter 14, by the way. And then on the right here is my um, evaluations. All these, uh, these symbols are taken from that evaluation criteria form I showed you at the beginning. That just sort of streamlines the whole process. Um, so in my comments, um, so I can cycle my comments. I can sort of um, follow up on the feedback I gave them from presentation one with this. So I said here at the beginning of the comments, well done, uh, good improvement on body language on eye and eye contact from presentation one. And then I go on to give more detailed uh, comments on their second presentation. And at the end of my comments here, you can see I've asked them to uh, rewatch the video of their presentation on the lecture archive while considering um, their weak points. So they have this sort of nice cycle of uh, follow up from presentation one and sort of a post task there as well. So it all sort of cycles in quite, quite nicely, I, I think. Um, as far as finding um, authentic presentation uh, examples, video examples for my course, um, there's a lot of things, material online, as you know, um, some of it's uh, pretty dodgy quality, but there is some really good uh, quality material free online if you have the time to look around. One thing I found really uh, useful for example presentations for my context is this a three minute thesis competition where um, graduates, postgraduate students, um, sorry, graduate students are um, asked to uh, present their, uh, their research in three minutes to a non-expert audience. And th these are great videos for my context because they were short and they were sort of research um, related. Um, I also notice a lot of uh, big international conferences um, in science and te technology often have um, their own YouTube pages now and some of the videos are uploaded there. So these are great resources for my course. Um, but if you're just teaching general orientation, um, sorry, general presentation classes, then there's all sorts of other things that are actually really good quality online. For example, the Toastmasters World Championship competition. Um, you can see that on, you can get them on YouTube, of course, um, TED Talks. There are also lots of other um, useful resources that I found. Um, I don't have time to cover them today, uh, but at the end of this talk, I will make available the links, uh, online links I use in my courses and um, also some of the materials that I offer for downloads. So I'll get back to you at the end with that. Um, so what I do with these example videos is I have um, the students actually evaluate them. So on the left here in this form, we have, for example, Emily Johnson's three minute thesis video. So I'll get them to actually evaluate. Um, I, I got them to evaluate her uh, delivery only and uh, use our uh, presentation criteria to um, give some strong and weak points and then discuss them with their, um, the other students after it. Um, Sam Hazen's uh, conference presentation, I got them to evaluate the visuals for the first 10 minutes of his talk and give some strong and weak points and then discuss them. So the, the good thing about um, this was that they were getting um, exposure to more relatively uh, more authentic materials. Um, and also they got some practice with using our evaluation criteria there on the right, which they're going to need to do uh, for their uh, peer evaluations. So just a quick summary of, of the adjustments I made. Um, I, I thought they are working quite well. I, the students seem to really um, engage more with the uh, course content um, because they're presenting more, they're getting more personalized feedback. They're also getting an opportunity to, to sort of cycle in 
that feedback into the next presentation. And access to the video recordings really helps, um, not just with my <laughs> helping with my feedback and um, and scores, but also um, having the presenters themselves watch themselves uh, record uh, present on video is actually useful as well. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so I just I want to show you now some uh, post course student feedback from um, my courses. The left data set um, is from the first two courses I did when I started this course, so back in 2014, 2015. And it's just part of the post-course questionnaire. Which, and in this part, the students were asked um, to what degree they, they agreed with uh, three um, components of the course or, or points on the course. The first component was the course was well-structured overall. This is down the bottom of the graph here. The next one is the learning materials were appropriate and uh, on the right, overall, I'm satisfied with the course. So in my pre-adjustment courses, uh, there are the scores there. You know, I, I guess mostly of them, most of them strongly agreed with that the course um, was effective. Um, but if we look at the post-adjustment um, um, course questionnaire data on the right, we get an even, um, even more sort of agreement with the course content, particularly with um, regards to learning materials and general course satisfaction. Of course, these are just small sample sizes, but they sort of confirmed what I thought about the course and that it was um, becoming more, sort of meeting the student needs uh, more effectively. With the final course questionnaires um, post course adjustment, I also asked them about um, how useful they thought different parts of the course were. Um, and with, uh, you know, five being very useful, this is this light blue color and inclining down to one not useful, that's a dark blue color. Um, the middle course, the middle um, graph here is the highest. So they felt that uh, the feedback from myself or from the teacher was the most useful part of the course. Um, but, uh, you know, they also thought watching the other students evaluate um, presentations and evaluating them was really useful as well, which is uh, quite quite interesting, um, even more useful than watching the uh, authentic or semi-authentic videos. Um, and there were also no problems, uh, not too many problems with students having peer evaluations as part of their scores. Um, so uh, here are some comments from the very, the final course questionnaire after the adjustments. Um, th these are selected comments, of course. Um, um, I just didn't, don't have time to talk about all of them. Um, First one, uh, watch, one student said watching many presentations and evaluations from the teacher and other students was very helpful in learning presentation skills. Uh, another student said, I like watching presentation videos because it's difficult to look for good presentations. So it was useful for me. Uh, some less positive comments. There were too many uh, student presentations to watch and I want more practice with organizing content. Um, those final comments, I, I'm inclined to agree with the students. Um, I, I also think that the present course needs some more improvements. Um, as you can see, the presentations are quite short that the students are doing. So it's very difficult to, effect, to sort of evaluate their organization because the presentations are so short. Um, one thing I could do is do what we did during our online lessons in COVID-19 is, ha is have um, one of the presentations done as a recorded and uploaded presentation to a shared drive that other students could access. This will let me make the presentation length longer. Um, it will also um, probably enhance the feedback as well. Um, and then have the other presentation done just face to face. Um, students are always uh, giving me feedback saying, oh, we would like to do more delivery and pronunciation in class, et cetera. Um, and I, I'm inclined to agree with that. My experience on delivery has, has always um, sort of given the most rapid improvements in our presentation. But anyway, just before I um, finish up here, I would um, I'll just share with you the uh, some of the links I use in my courses and some of the downloads. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unshare the screen and just quickly take you to my uh, website, and I'll give you the links if you're interested. Um, okay, share. Uh, this is my website. Um, if I go down to presentations. Um, so here are 
a lot of the online links and downloads, or not all of them, but a lot of them, the ones I use in my course, uh, what I'll do is I'll, if you're interested, I'll post the link um, in the comments if I can. Okay, there we go. And also, um, if you're doing more general uh, oral presentation classes, you might be interested in some of the videos, YouTube videos I collected here um, as examples of effective presentations. Um, and I've also included all their transcripts as well. So I'll, I'll also post that link in the comments if you're interested, just give me a second here. Just give me a second here. Okay, so that uh, brings me to the um, end of this uh, short presentation. Um, Sorry, it was a little bit rushed. Um, I hope you found some of my uh, content and reflections uh, useful. And I'm happy now to take any questions or um, comments that you might have. So the floor is open for questions or comments. Or you can write them in the chat column if you want. I already, actually, I see a few chat. Oh, no, hang on a second here. Thank you for the links. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> no questions, comments? Is anybody here also doing I think oral... uh, Ed is raising hand. Oh, sorry, Ed. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, um, so in the presentations that they did, the students did in class, did they, uh, so they took it in turns to come up to the front of the class and gave their presentations one by one. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And okay, so that takes quite a bit of time out of your lesson then, I guess. Yes, uh, exactly. And um, when I um, sometimes those, uh, so I had presentation one, uh, lesson three, presentation two, lesson seven, I think. Um, sometimes they would go over and carry over into the, like over one lesson. Maybe I would start the presentations in lesson six. Um, so often, depending on the number of students I had in the course, I would use more than one lesson, um, particularly for presentation two. So, yes. Um, but I also um, I also needed that time between the presentations as well for to sort of write my feedback initially anyway when we didn't have the video the video uh, resource. Right. Um, just to, just to, uh, if you're interested, so I also teach presentation class and um, my students I get them to do presentations so in small groups of like four or five and they uh, they give their smartphone to one of the students in the group. So they give their presentation and they record it on their own phone. Then they switch group and do it again. Uh, and then they upload their best video to uh, our website so I can grade it later because I found it just too difficult to, to grade them all in the class. I, I completely agree. And having video materials is just such a wonderful resource, um, even just for students to see themselves uh, present and they're, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and yeah, and having those those resources available online for you to sort of access to evaluate. Yeah, it just, I also found that um, sort of learning the hard way from a real time evaluating is that you always have to have the students number their slides. If they don't number the slides, it's almost impossible to give proper feedback in real time. Um, but that's not such a problem if you have the video recordings. Thank you. Sure. Is there, are there any other questions or, or comments? Ah, yes. Uh, is that um, Sa Sabina? Sorry if I mispronounced it. Sabina. 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 Hi. Hello. Um, I, I just wonder, maybe I missed it, but um, were, were the evaluations given in English or in their mother tongue? Ah, in English, yes. Uh, and uh, English. did you find any difficulties with that? I mean, did you um, see any struggles? Not with this course, no. Uh, I was fortunate the students who are all taking this course um, uh, as a sort of um, an entry requirement to the course, they had to have a certain English ability. Um, so uh, no, uh, no real issues. Um, but I always made sure um, 
when I gave them the written feedback, um, that I gave it to them during the class because they would often have questions about it or they didn't understand some point. I, I never wanted to sort of just give it to them outside class where they, they would just walk away and say, what's this? So um, I always sort of made my available to, um, myself available to discuss it with them in case, because th there were you know some misunderstandings as well. And some of them had questions about why did you grade me like this or like that? And so, um, yeah. I hope that sort of answers your question, but um, I didn't have any absolute beginners in this particular course. Mm -hmm. Because that is what I'm kind of struggling with, or I would like them to give feedback, but um, they would be, well, my students are lower levels and uh, I'm not sure if they are uh, able to. You so know, that, so or... they're, pre they're presenting in English, but you're not sure if they understand their feedback in English. Is that what you mean? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Presentation is kind of like one practice task for them. And I'm trying to get them to take it as a speaking practice instead of a presentation. Um, but, um, but I think they would feel more comfortable to give feedback in their mother tongue. However, yeah, I, mean, um, I can't monitor it because I don't understand yeah, I mean, Japanese. If, it, if it's a presentation, you're looking at presentation skills. I, I don't see any problem with using um, L1 as long as they're all speaking the same L1. <laughs> I they mean, do, but I don't. <laughs> oh, I see. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I, I want to introduce uh, feedback, but so far I gave feedback and uh, <laughs> sometimes I did a discussion, as you said, like they could mm. discuss in groups, but mainly about their own experiences rather than giving. Yes, they could and should react, but uh, yeah, they um, can't really express their real criticism sure, yeah um i suppose i'm language. just going through my slides now um on the right here this is the um the criteria we use in this course for the evaluations i know it's quite sort of um lengthy and wordy um mm -hmm. but perhaps you could consider some kind of rubric that's simplified and in writing where you could give them sort of the points from the chart and then sort of have it written there in simple english to help them um interpret uh their feedback um i think my my criteria here on the right probably needs some improvements <laughs> as well but if you sort of look at the points you could probably simplify them um for sort of more beginner level students um it depends on obviously their level yeah so if you okay, don't want anything you. so the uh so one benefit of getting the students to present in groups uh, as well is also they can then give them each other the feedback so using their own yeah language as well so they can they give themselves feedback directly after the presentations but then i give them the written feedback in english later yeah 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 that's 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 really great i think i i really like that idea um um i think it's i honestly think it's more important they get the feedback than what language they get the feedback in, but as as the teacher, you, you want to be involved <laughs> in the process in case they're sort of giving the wrong kind of um, feedback. But yeah, it's sort of a balance, isn't it? And a lot of things to think about. <laughs> thank and, you so much. Yeah, for a lot, of, a lot of variables here. Yes, thank you very much. I think we might have um run out of time there. Yeah. Um. um yeah. Sorry for interrupting, um, but uh. You may continue this conversation in the continued presentation discussions room. I have put the session rig in the chat. So we are in the Zoom room 10. So please go out to breakout room 10 in the continued presentation discussions room if you want to sure. continue this conversation. Understood. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you.